In part two of the product variations tutorial series, I'm going to cover something that I was alerted to that's actually really cool that streamlines this process. I had an instructor tell me many, many years ago that the best way to learn is to teach. And this is a really good example of that. A couple of people commented and said, hey, Chris, there is a way that you could use geometry nodes to streamline this. I'm starting off with the previous file and I've stripped out all the animation data, but I've still got the three scenes plus the fourth for rendering. So that's basically our starting point. So let's come over here and actually switch back just to the, the plain vanilla timeline. We're not going to go into the action editor or nonlinear editing. Hope you learned something from those, but we're going to be able to bypass that now. So we're going to start off with the product body and you can see that I've removed the extra meshes because the simplicity of this is that we just need one and I've still got the materials down here. In fact, I've added one and I've added a fake user to each of these materials so I don't accidentally clean them up. So the fake user tells Blender that this is something you want to retain. So if you were to come up and do a cleanup operation and do a purge data, it would retain those even though they're not technically being used by a specific mesh or some other object in your scene. So with our primary object selected, let's jump over to geometry nodes and we're going to basically ignore all this stuff right now. We're going to click new and we'll see that we have a new modifier show up. Let's move that modifier to the top of the stack. So the way that we do this is we add just two nodes. This is a very simple setup. We do shift A and we do index switch. We drop that right there. And then the next node we do A is a material replace material. These are the only two nodes that we're going to use. Let's make a little bit more room here so we can see these more closely. So we have replace material and index switch. Let's first take the geometry output of our group input here. So let's drag this over into geometry. And then this goes finally here. Okay, so that's basically the pathway. But the index switch modifies the replace material. So what we do is we come over and we tell index switch that we don't want to work on geometry, but we want to work on materials. You can see that there's an index entry right here. So indices are one of the ways that uh, Blender keeps track of all kinds of different data sets. And we need to tell this node to grab indices from this data right here, which is represented by this group input. So we come over and grab this and drive that into index. Okay. Now we've only got two material slots right here, but we basically need to configure this to take into account the materials that we've already generated. So we need to customize, reconfigure this index switch just a little bit, press the N key and then come over here to where it says node. And you can see that we've only got two entries, but when we look at the materials here, we can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five materials. So we need to add up to five entries. So zero to four. Okay. And then we can come over here and we can specify these materials as the variables that we're going to be swapping out. So you can see, I'm just coming in and I'm adding each one of these until we get all of these in place. Let's press the N key to remove that panel. Now that we've gotten this reconfigured, let's come over to the replace material node, the old material that we want to replace. So let's take a look at this. Let's come back to the materials here. We've got three slots on this object. One of them is the material that we want to replace and swap out, cycle out. And the other two we want to retain. So old is the material that we want to swap out. So we're going to call this blue as our starting point. It's going to see blue and it's going to swap it out for the first one, but it's going to initially look and identify this as it's assigned to the object. Now the new material, we drag output to new 
and these are going to be what gets cycled out for the blue, but it's going to start on blue. So let's just review really quick what it's doing. The input is basically looking at this geometry and of all the index structure that's there, it has index structure for materials that we feed down here. So it knows that these materials have an index relationship to materials on this object. I guess that's one way that you could explain it. And then it cycles that data output to the new material. And that's what this does is it replaces these. So how do we actually specify which one of these to cycle to? Well, this is where we come over back to our modifier stack. And you're going to note that it says index right here. This is where we swap out the value starting from zero up to four for the five total that we have. So let's come over here and let's take a look at this. And now, as we cycle through, there we go. Now I've noticed that you have to punch in a value. But now you can see what happens. Every time I set a new value here, it just proceeds to the next color. So now we're ready to animate this. Remember, I removed all the animation data. So at this point, let's come over here and turn this on so we can see it. We're at frame one. Okay, so we've already got body blue on here. Let's come back into our modifier stack. Let's come back to zero. Let's just click this to add a keyframe there. So the next thing is we just come to the next keyframe and then we go up to index of one, which is green. Click to add a keyframe. And then we just proceed up through this. So we do two and then add the keyframe. Next, second marker three, add a keyframe, and then finally we go to four and we add a keyframe. So now we cycle through and we don't have a bunch of different meshes like, like my original version. So let's come over here. Let's to the geometry node, the entry. We can actually give this geometry node setup a name. So we'll call this material cycle or switch something like that. So it's clear. Now for this geometry that we, we were switching out, let's actually come down to the data object properties for that. And we're going to note up here, we have a browse mesh data. Remember, this is referencing a data set that is the actual polygon structure. And let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this product body mesh. So it's clearly related. It doesn't really change anything, but it gives us a very clear reference for what we're about to do. Now, remember, we already have these other scenes set up that have viable setup information. We have the, the lid on the side, for instance, and the third one, we have a different camera angle and the lights have been tweaked for that, but we just need to get this moved over. All we do come over and copy that. Let's turn off interactive renderer and let's switch over to lid on the side. Let's come back to frame one and we have all of these. We don't need these. We're just going to go ahead and remove those X and then come over and let's just paste the data that we just copied, but it's still going to copy it. It's going to be just like we had done an unlinked duplicate. Okay. So when we come down, it would be nice if we had this so it was all linked together. And in fact, if we come down here, you can see that it even changed and duplicated the geometry node. Well, we can, we can link back to the original one just in case we make a change, right? Let's go ahead and link back to that. And let's come down here to the data object properties for this. And it, it also duplicated that mesh. We might as well link it back up to the original product body mesh. So this is now basically an instance to the one that's in the other scene. We can see that it says two right there. So it's referencing to the other one. So when we come in here, we take a look at it. Now we have the lid on the side and we can cycle through and we have this change. Everything's already retained there. So let's go ahead and do it for the third and final one. I always like to go back to the original. So let's come back here. Let's go ahead and copy that. And then we can come to the third one. We can just run through this really quick. Let's not 
have the interactive renderer come on. Let's go ahead and remove those. We will paste in that original. Just come down, find product body mesh, the original, and then come up here and let's also link it back to the original material cycle uh, node setup. And then when we come in and we do a render, there they are. So that was easy. They're all set up. Let me come into, I'm going to come into the ground. I think the ground could be more visible. So let's come in and make a quick change to this index of refraction. I increase the index of refraction at this high camera angle. That's going to increase the low incidence and it helps us to have a little bit more visibility there. Okay. So we are ready now to pass this back over for final rendering. Before we jump over and get all the final renderings going, uh, I did add one material, so I need to come over here and add an extra frame for each one. So let's go ahead and do that. And then one final frame there. Since I have this selected, we have a whole bunch of extra data duplicates we can see in the materials right there. Let's go ahead and come over to File, and then down to Clean Up, and we're going to purge all of those extra duplicates. It said it removed deleted 16 data blocks. So we can see that that just is nice. It cleans everything up right there. Okay, so now we're ready to jump back over to the for rendering scene, which is where we do all of our renderings in the video editor. Let's just jump back over. It will have remembered all the settings, so we don't have to kind of go back through all of that. But do Shift and A. Let's add each of the scenes. Move right there, Shift A. We add scene two, lid on the side, and come over and add the final one, Shift A, three camera up. And we come over, we've got 19 frames, so we don't want to go to 250. Let's just type in, let's do 18, and there we go. So now we are ready to render. We just need to come over and specify the output location. So let's just go into the rendering folder that I've already created. And we take all of them and they will render in one pass by doing a render animation. And there we go. And purple and so on and so forth all the way down the line. So I hope you found this to be useful. I'm really grateful for the community feedback I got on using that really simple geometry node feedback because that was definitely simpler than my original approach.